But even, and even if it doesn't work and you want it to, you still know that you've done everything you possibly could have done to get there. Welcome everyone to the eighth episode of the Fitness Academy podcast. I am absolutely buzzing to have this man virtually in front of me right now, uh, Harrison Ward. Harrison has played um, for England under 19s, obviously, which is probably a bit more sort of of prevalent uh, recently. In 2018, gained the selection. A bit more recently, if you haven't seen, where are you living under a rock? Um, he made his uh, T20 debut on the first of July uh, this year at Lords, which was Big one I can manage for himself. After that, a little bit, even 10 days after that, went on to make a first class debut in on the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. And then obviously his last day debut, so his uh, 50 over debut uh, on the 23rd, if I'm not mistaken, mate. Obviously you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on that one, but obviously huge, huge experience already and he's just getting started. So thanks for coming on, H. Appreciate it, mate. Right, mate. Don't worry about it. It's nice to be here. Obviously, no. like, like I mentioned, I've watched a few of yours before. And it's nice to be on it, actually. Yeah, I was actually joking, but it's actually an honour. It's an honour. It's an honour. <laughs> mate, it's been watched. It's no, a, it's people honesty, actually yeah. watch it. People actually watch it. I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. baffled. Just doing it for yeah. myself and just watching it for myself over yeah. and over again. That's where the views keep come going, from. Keep, keep the YouTube videos up. Yeah, exactly, right. Up. Just every single time it finishes, just click it again. Okay, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but obviously, mate, just crack it on to start with, mate. Just, just give us a little bit of an insight. Obviously, I've, I've, I've sort of highlighted the very, the very sort of, sort of known moments out there. But like, what for you, like, sort of your journey towards, towards where you got to today, where you're, where you're in that first team setup at in Sussex. Um, it's been, it's been a bit of a weird one, to be honest. Um, obviously, starting my, just finished my first year at uni this year. Um, but being twenty one. Um, so a little bit older. I actually had two years down at Sussex playing, uh, then got released, had to find something else to do, uh, which was uni, best option for me. And then kind of just obviously through a little bit of luck through uh, through COVID, um, managed to get a chance to get around the squad. Um, and then, yeah, impressed and obviously then made my debut at Lords, which was, pretty, like you mentioned, it's pretty special. And yeah, gone from there, really. List, uh, first class debut and then a this day debut, so it's been been a pretty whirlwind couple of months to be honest mate that's incredible if you like it it seems like it seems a bit too good to be true if you probably think about it but then obviously that's the that's the environment that we're living in at the moment isn't it it's just like like obviously any young any young some young player just needs to be ready or is it like sort of a couple of the lads as well have gone into 100 now because then obviously them their lads have have caught covid or or anything like that so like it's it's just vice versa with everything and it's fantastic because then obviously it gives people those experiences like you said pretty young like you said so obviously you weren't expecting an opportunity just yet but you know thankfully it's happened mate in terms of that I'll, I'm interested because obviously from from where I've met you and I've been thankful to meet you like in in the MCCU scheme or, or in the trials for the MCCU, MCCU scheme it was it must have been pretty sort of different being involved in that sort of academy setup and then obviously being released obviously like I, like you mentioned of of um I managed to do an episode with uh, Chris Gibson and Gibbo as well, absolute legend as well. You managed, who actually unfortunately got released as well from Nottinghamshire. But how did you kind of? Was it an immediate like sort of bounce back, or were you like kind of a little bit on the ropes for to sort of go for the scheme straight away? Uh, it was like kind of obviously when I arrived at uni, it was I was very much ready to get back into cricket, and that was obviously a path that I wanted to go down. But it went like kind of lockdown happened and. The news before that in terms of me not getting um another deal like if that was the that was obviously the hard bit and the bit where I question whether was it really something that I wanted to do going forward and luckily I had that time to kind of be away from the game and not not think about it every second of every day and it'd be almost life and death like it was at certain points um before kind of gain a different perspective on it and yeah when I was when I came when I was at uni I was definitely ready to give it another crack and see where it could see where it could take me in a different environment so it kind of gave you like that a little bit of a little bit of a fresh start i imagine then no like sort of after the after the lockdown i think i think everyone was kind of for a lot of people it was kind of like that little bit of a break that they needed after so it's kind of like sort of it hit, hit us like a massive truck then it was kind of like oh yeah straight in and then all lockdown and then what was it so a month or whatever it was in the end so 
at that stage, it would kind of give you a bit of a break. It was like, obviously, they talk about sort of giving yourself, having the right balance and things like that, and I speak about it a lot. But like we were talking about off, off, off record, like it was like sort of you don't like you like you mentioned which was pretty interesting like you don't actually understand how busy it is and actually until you actually get into yeah. that setup which is obviously understandable because you're sort of you're like oh right, yeah, I'll, I'll play I'll, I'll rest I'll train or but you're you're constantly working aren't you constantly traveling and things like that yeah it's, yeah it's one of the I'd say one of the massive things was that I didn't realize how how much hard work it took before and how like how difficult it actually was like you said being in it and being being around every day and how busy things are. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's been a bit of a it's, it's been a bit of a weird transition from being at uni, but it's actually the the time at uni and being in that MCCU. Obviously, I still am now. Um, but it was so nice to just play with mates. I, so I knew quite a few of the guys um, before. Obviously, I played with AJ was at school, Brandon Allen at school, um, and then mean people that I knew, like you said, Gibbo and stuff like that. It was just a nice fresh kind of environment where it allowed me just to realize why I like, like love playing cricket again and it was more that than it was for any other reason that's what I've heard that from from a lot of like sort of obviously like the bigger players who like sort of do interviews and stuff like that where they say like more recently sort of Stokes has come out Ben Stokes has said like obviously he's he's taken a little bit of a break and then obviously I think that's that's come out obviously on a negative flip because obviously he's come out of lockdown so what was it a year and a half ago I think he got injured, he broke his finger or something like that. And then obviously he's been straight back into it and he's he's gone into all these games. So like in to a certain extent, could you like in like in your opinion, would was were you a little bit thankful that, that lockdown happened at that point? Because obviously, like you said, like obviously we've already previously mentioned on it, it gave you that refresh, but was it was it that turning point where you sort of write, no, 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 exactly. I, I really do love this game, this is what I'm gonna work for. Whereas it, some people just say, No, you know what, it's it's time for me to so sort of give it up. Yeah, I think it definitely was. Like it was, it was obviously it wasn't ideal getting getting released, and that took me a while to get over that. But that lockdown period kind of gave me that. I realised, and a little bit of uni, to be fair, where I miss that environment and I miss playing cricket and being around all the time, and that was kind of what was a little bit of a driving force and hope, like making me work a little bit hard and in all areas and like it's yeah it, it was it like you said it, it did reset and it gave me that a little bit of a different perspective as well which i think has massively helped oh mate that's 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 incredible because obviously anyone who's sort of looking i know a couple of people sort of that i work with at the moment are like sort of coming to cardiff next year or sort of in september and sort of looking to get onto that scheme it's it's good because it i think being sort of involved in even the trial process thankfully it was it was good to see that they still sort of had that enjoyment factor and it wasn't too serious obviously you need to take it seriously to a certain extent you're in a world-class sort of academy but like to a certain extent it still gives you that sort of it teaches you to love the game you know I mean you know if you know you never get a, a contract you know unfortunately you would you would, you know, you would, it would still be okay. You still like sort of worked hard as hard as you could, but like, like you said, it gives you a different perspective. In that sense, do you reckon that different perspective then allowed you to sort of have a bit more freedom when you played? You weren't sort of like sort of built up, being like, "Oh, I need to score runs here." Yeah, it was a bit more free then. No, no, no doubt, it was. It was nice just to like every time I go and back, not like I said, mentioned before. Sometimes when you're in that environment, it can feel like it is life and death, and there is nothing else to life than, than cricket and being around it all the time and that was the nice thing was playing with people that I knew and without that kind of pressure of everything that professional sport gives you like, like I said it, it's helped me realize why I like the game and then kind of gone from there you then want to put in the extra yard in the gym or or in training because you you, you love the game not because you're doing it for a for a contract or, yeah. or for money, it's it's just simply why you start to play in the game, and actually, it all kind of. Not, luckily for me, it's it's fallen to place in those in it. Um, I mean, I'm in mean, no uncertain terms. I'm not finished our score. I'm, I'm not. I've still only got a deal to the end of the year. But it's it's been so much more enjoyable now being back in this environment because of like kind of a little bit of a new perspective on it. That's fantastic. It's just like the sort of a new chapter. I like to say, like sort of, even if it's like one one closes, another one opens. Because then, 
at the end of the day, like obviously to a certain extent, you know, when you get into your later years, but like sort of you get out as much as you put in. So like you said, like the hard work, you know, you put in sort of once you got released, you know, would then have dictated, you know, you sort of getting onto the scheme and then obviously getting your opportunity sort of bit uh, sort of last month it was. So to that extent, do you reckon sort of, oh, I don't know how to put this then, sort of being released at that early age, do you reckon it was a, it was a bit, sort of going back to it, sorry, a bit of a down, obviously, thankfully now you're, yeah. you're signed us into the end of the year, like you said, fingers crossed, another deal after that. But like sort of when you, in that release moment, what, what, so when you got released, sorry, uh, was it a, was it a lot much of a bigger shock than it was just because obviously you, you've done well with the sort of the under nine, the under 18s etc that's for the under 19 sorry so then was it a bit was it a massive shock to you or do you do you sort of have that sort of sort of 50 50 way like right it could go either way yeah I think it's more than 50 50 I knew obviously now that I'm a, lot, I'm a few years older than I have I like to think I'm a few years more much a little bit more mature as well I didn't like I I'm looking back I didn't really em- embrace it and take the opportunity that was given there I kind of took for granted the position I was in and I didn't I definitely didn't work as hard um as I should have done or so, so I think it was it was probably it was probably a fair thing that happened it wasn't sort of I wasn't it wasn't unlucky or it was kind of I think it was coming but it it's definitely I almost needed that to a little bit of a wake up call to kind of show me that I wasn't doing the right things and that maybe I did need to do uh, just take a little bit of a step back and have a look. Did I really want it? And what can I do to kind of go from there really? That, that's incredibly interesting. Cause then obviously like, I can't remember who I was reading this from or, or I was listening to a podcast or something. It was sort of like being like sort of evasive or, or invasive where sort of one, you, you take what's given to you and then you sort of like chuck it aside and you don't really care or, you sort of use it to sort of get back sort of to, to where you want to be. So it's it's incredible that you actually have that perspective. Now, was it was that perspective there like from the start as soon as when you got released or was it like something that you had to kind of kind of like sort of get your head through sort of a couple of months afterwards? I feel like it, like it, it, it definitely wasn't immediate. Like obviously, it's a pretty upsetting and yeah, not, not imagine, an ideal yeah. thing to hear when you get you get told that you're not going to that you have to find something else to do. Um, but yeah, like, and the, obviously like a lockdown helped in terms of that time I had to think for myself, but it also made it a little bit worse where I saw, like, cause it was, there was no cricket happening for basically the first part of the summer and you see people obviously then doing stuff in the professional stuff to start off with. It was actually, actually did make it more difficult for a while where I didn't, really know what I was doing and things like that and felt almost felt a little bit sorry for myself but it was like you can either like you said there's two ways you can go about things you can either sit back and blame other people or or you can kind of like just work it out yourself and work and try and find a way back into it and lucky but the help of a few other people so it's not I'm not going to say it wasn't just me obviously parents are massive in that a couple of uh, lad I know um, Sussex called Jack Carson was massive but helped me massively was sort of stuff like that a little bit of kind of inside information and things like that which was which was nice but it was yeah it was it was tough but it was helped as well a lot of other people to get through all right uh, yeah obviously jack I've, turn I've, into, and, and, and turn and turn it back into a positive because it, it wasn't exactly yes. it's all things you'd rather look at it negatively it actually probably helps me massively and i wouldn't have been here without it yeah it's that's it's I like I like how you said that because obviously every I think everyone's very sort of down in the moments sort of when something bad happens and they sort of then they beat themselves up because they're down. But I think you know you would have to be a little bit sort of cold blooded to sort of be sort of okay straight after something like that would happen. I think it's it take it's natural for yourself to be a bit down. You need to get a bit down to to understand one like like yourself like to truly love the game or to. To, to sort of really fight for something or someone, for example. Um, but you meant you mentioned Jack there. Obviously, I have I have heard of Jack. Obviously, a big cricket fan myself. So, um, in that respect, was it your having your sort of team around you? If you like, was that a, a big factor? Do you reckon if that team, obviously your team, thankfully would have been there? Would you reckon it would have been that ten times harder to get back if sort of maybe they wouldn't have been as supportive when you 
when sort of you were in that position when you got the news? I think, I think uh, it wasn't the, the ideal thing about it was that they weren't. It wasn't. They didn't feed me false information. Really, it was. It was supported. It came. It was in. It was from the right place. It was how it was. From the right. Yeah. Obviously, wanted exactly. Obviously, wanted to do well, but it wasn't. They didn't. It wasn't sugar coated, which is actually what I like. I the person that as tough as it is to hear the truth, sometimes you need to hear it, and that's what obviously both parents and Jack mainly said because he was Jack's obviously now where it's taking fifty first class wickets from basically he says the same thing not being Nothing, yeah. not knowing we're going to be post the academy um so it was massive him helping me out because he's been there done it worked hard and obviously seeing the rewards but he was massive in telling me what what i was and wasn't wasn't doing right and it was up to me how i how i deal with that information and but like it, like i said it was best to hear the, the the ugly truth and it was just for someone to just turn around and and just be like, oh, you're going okay, when really that wasn't the case. I think that makes it 10 times easier for 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 someone to sort of, maybe someone to coach, for example, because then like yourself, then they know they can tell you the sort of the, the God on us truth, and you said you don't have to sugarcoat it, and then you can sort of process that a little bit easier. If it's sugarcoated, then you're like, well, what does that exactly mean? He says, oh, I've done well, but, you know, I could do better, whereas you're like, no, you know, you need to improve in this, this, and this, and this. Um, but mate, obviously, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to positives. You know, it's not a sad podcast. You know, it's not a sad yeah, yeah. environment I want to be in. So, <laughs> uh, in terms of sort of moving on from that, you know, obviously, like like we've mentioned, it's it's been a bit of a weird one, hasn't it? You know, obviously, people having to isolate and things like that. Opportunities get given. You know, obviously, hearing hearing Cardiff. You know, we've got the you know the news like you know Sam Pierce. Yeah. You know, you know Dan Dalthwaite as well going to a hundred. Yeah. You know, it's you know cases like that where well, obviously, probably weren't expecting it. So, from that perspective, you know, can you give us a little insight into into what it was? Was it like was it a phone call? You know, was it, you know, was it was a letter through the post? Obviously, it's not a letter through the post, but obviously, yeah, uh, yeah. it was. Well, it was weird to be honest because I played second team cricket the week before, um, knowing that kind of a couple of twos, a couple of twos, T twenties, you know, kept, like didn't do it, and nothing special. But then they were going back to Red Bull cricket, the four day cricket, the week after knowing that there was a lot of pros around that just play Red Bull at Sussex. Um, so I was cut, so the, I wasn't actually supposed to play in second team cricket that week. All right, okay. It actually brought the, the pros back. Um, so I wasn't actually supposed to be doing anything. So came to the Monday morning, got a call from the uh, second team coach at the time, Jason Swift, uh, missed it because I was actually still asleep. Um, <laughs> So then, so then called him back. Yeah, called him back an hour later, about ten o'clock, um, and basically asked. Uh, he said that um, there was actually there'd been a couple of dropouts and that they needed a couple of players and that they actually sorted them. So I rang him. So he sorted three replacements. So I then again was basically told that I wasn't able to come down and oh, play. Oh no! A couple of hours later. There's talk of COVID stuff, so they want me to come down just in case. So I yeah. travelled down to Brighton in the hotel, was waiting for information on COVID cases. There was a team ready to play if the COVID case was negative, okay. and there was one if there was one if positive. Oh, wow. Obviously, luckily, luckily for me, it was it was well. Luckily for me, obviously, unfortunate for the guys for yeah. after you got COVID, but helped me massively. Um, he was he got COVID, so then ended up. Um, being in the playing in the twos, then a couple of T20 guys went down with it as well. Link, right? So then, basically, the next day was I got was waiting in the hotel room for information, and then got a call from the director of cricket, and basically said we need you to come in and and sign, and yeah, went from there. Wow, mate, that's incredible. Did you tell him you were in the gym instead of being asleep? He's like, no, mate, yeah. just, oh, just finished the yeah, quick, yeah, you know, yeah. quick session in the gym. Sorry, just making sure it's, it's all right. You know, I, I was waiting for this call. I was waiting for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but in, was it was it a little... I, can you describe the feeling when you actually got the call? Was it sort of... I, I can't imagine it's relief. Was it more sort of like excitement then at that time? Because obviously, like you've mentioned, obviously with the scheme stuff and you playing second team stuff, obviously you have, you you were positive about it. You 
you progressed onto that and you started working even you know hard like you said you've admitted you know you could have worked a bit harder you put in those stuff to you put in those sort of um sort of what would you call it some um plans to to work hard and to improve so then was it like oh thankfully i've got my, my chance or was it like oh wow i'm getting my chance it was, I think it was a mixture of both, to be honest. It was, I'd done like a, all right for the second team. I'd done, I think I was second leading run score in Red Bull cricket. Um, I'd done all right. It was, obviously, it's not the ideal way that you want your opportunity to be given. There are, you know, there, there, is, there is like an ideal way, but it, it, at the end of the day, it was an opportunity. It was, it felt like all, like the hard work that I've put in since the, the bad news and me, me realizing that it, what I was doing wasn't enough kind of had paid off, um, which was nice because then you kind of the things that people say to you that you never believe when you're when you're getting bad news, bad bits of news. It's it's the old same old saying of obviously good good things happen to good people. I heard a lot, and obviously for that then to finally come up, come about was quite nice. Right uh, in. That's it. That's incredible because obviously you're. I've said incredible about ten times, but you know it is. So I have to admit it. But um, if was there a little bit obviously, I can imagine, mate. Oh, playing at playing at Lords, of course, you're not going to get nervous. Nice one, James. Um, was that? Uh, were you? Did you have to sort of? Oh, it sounds a bit, a bit, um, a bit strange. But was there a little bit of a pinch yourself moment where you're like playing at playing at Lords, you know, for Sussex at a T Twenty game? Was it a bit of a sort of a, a little pinch yourself moment or? Um, but massively, like it was from going from not even playing the second team to then making a debut at Lords, it was pretty, pretty surreal. You obviously on the bar, you see you turn up to the ground and it's you realise it's Lords. But you've, I've been to watch at Lords, I've been to watch cricket at Lords, so it just felt like everything. Then you realise that obviously you're in the pavilion and then and then going out and having a look at the pitch with like players that you I've watched. So, like since I was y- younger, like Ravi Lapar and Luke Wright, it was all pretty, all, all pretty surreal actually. And it was, it definitely was. There's no way that if you know, it's probably not human if you walk, if you're, yeah. um, if you don't have to pinch yourself at some point in, in a moment like that. Yeah, I can imagine. Right? You're like, oh, I might, you know, I deserve this. I should have had this about ten years ago. Um, yeah. No, but um, <laughs> in. Like you mentioned, sort of Luke Wright and, and Ravi Bopar, sort of playing with those guys, even if it was because, let's say, you know, the, like I said, the world we live in now is ridiculous. So, you know, like you said, like obviously I'd probably use this for like the little bio bit, but like it's like one minute you're, you know, you're just getting released, and the next minute you're you're playing T20 at Lords, you're making a debut. Was when you actually sort of sort of got the news you're going to make the call was it a, a psychological moment where you're like right now I know for sure now you know I've I've I'm I've, I'm now technically a professional cricketer and, and you know I've played a professional game so was that was that something that was told to you I know a lot it happens a lot sort of with the with the footballers like whether like you have like sort of played for a club you know be be, pr- be proud of yourself you yeah. know was that was did that give you a little bit more sort of motivation to, to stay in the side and to, to keep like sort of earning your place Oh, definitely. You kind of like you don't really realise how big it is until you kind of you're there and you're in in that yeah. moment and what it what it means. But it, like you said, it, like, I'm not under any under any illusions. It is. It's not. It's not. This uh, this isn't where I want it to end. I obviously no. want to get better and keep getting better. Um, it's just like you said. It is nice to finally realise that dream of being a of, of being a pro and. And saying that obviously I am a professional producer, so definitely. In that, obviously, we've still got I think it's about ten minutes left, which is which is perfect. So, um, when you sort of made that sort of you made your debut, was it a was it a like I think like I, like we mentioned before, there's kind of two ways you can go about it. I think you can go down the right road, like right, cool, like you know I've made it, or like you're like all oh, right, cool, I need to keep working hard. You know, it's not guaranteed. You know, obviously. I, th- I think I know the answer to this question, but was there ever a sense of of sort of security at all? Which, uh, like I said, I don't think it was, but like, obviously you can give it a bit of a picture. Was ever a bit like quite cool. Now I'm in the setup. Was you know I'm I'm there, or you know just take it day by day and keep sort of grafting. Really, I mean there is there is an element of that. There is an element of the fact that you are there and you mm. you're now. Last year, you're not obviously established, but you've played. You've played a game, and you can mm. always 
you can always go back. There's a lot of people that are still trying to get into cricket now that I know that aren't in that, unfortunately, aren't in that same situation. Um, but it doesn't mean that obviously you have to accept it and just oh, it's I want like I said I want to keep getting better and keep improving and I and I want to I want to keep playing it's not something that I'm just going to be happy with and and sit around and kind of accept yeah. what what's what's gone in um in that sense then could you sort of you know just to a long conclusion can you sort of then give give your give like give an idea as to as to what the next left-handed tall bloke who who's from Sussex and wants to play cricket, professional cricket. Can you give a can you sort of give a bit of advice as to sort of that next lad who wants to sort of be the next Harrison Ward? I know obviously in the last podcast I, I did was well, just released a couple of days ago, so I mentioned oh how you need to be yourself. But obviously I think role models is 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 a good thing to have because then it gives you sort of that that sort of that point to aim for. So, like, do you have a bit of advice in terms of that sense? I, I, it's tough, isn't it? Because, like you said, you, you do ask everybody is different, and one thing that might, might work for me might not work for another person. But I'd, I'd say it's not actually. I think me getting to where I am now, obviously, is with through a lot of luck, but also just find like it's more finding about why I love the game and why I actually do what I want to do why why do I want to play cricket and then everything else kind of falls into place it's not been uh this is like this technically this is where I need to get to or you end up doing that stuff and doing the extra hours to get to do what it takes to be a professional and succeed because you because you want to because you love it and that's that's one thing that massively changed I've I, I, like I said before, luckily in lockdown, I had that where I could have to take a step back. Um, but I'd just say that just find out if, if it's something that you really want to do, why why do you want to do it? And then you can go from there. It's a, it's a lot it's a lot harder when you when you don't have that reason, when you don't have those reasons behind you. Well, hard, I think, when you can't enjoy it either. You don't have that moment to sort of take in. If you if you went into your day and you're like, "All oh, right, oh my god, I'm 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 nervous." Obviously, a little, probably a little bit nervous, but you're, oh, I'm I'm, you know, I'm bricking it, I'm bricking it. You know, you you're gonna feel, you're not gonna feel as sort of sort of ready to to you know to field and you know bat ball, you know whatever whatever you're asked to do in terms of that respect. But oh, how do I put this one? It's um, what is there a bit of sort of enjoyment towards it as well obviously like probably from the outside in it's probably like oh these guys are are serious they're cold-blooded they're sort of eye-eagled vision there is is there a sort of sense of enjoyment as well once you're even at that top level it's like oh, let's enjoy it boys oh massively there's no doubt that I definitely I 100% was wrecking it when I was out there fielding. I didn't I'm quite honest I didn't enjoy it until I didn't enjoy the fielding until the 13th over I was right. so worried about getting things wrong and things like that but that's I think that's something that shows you care yeah. hopefully um, but there is uh, yeah, the, one of the things that most people said to me before making was it was just enjoy it and take it in like there's obviously there's the added thing of it being at Lord's um, so that was all that was really was nothing about cricket or nothing. The only advice to me was given was really just take it in and, and, and enjoy it because that's how you, you won't ever, you, I'll, never, I'll never get that moment back. So to have kind of a lot of people around you say, make sure you take it in and you enjoy it was actually massively helpful because it obviously then just relaxes you and you then stop worrying about the cricket and you actually just, yeah. you know, just doing, doing what you've always done before. Uh, playing when you're 10 yeah um, it's just in a slightly different environment yeah obviously yeah just a tad just a tad different just a little <laughs> bit um oh obviously mate, you touched on it like just a tad before but like we'll finish on this point like the best advice you've ever been given you know whether that be sort of yesterday you know or whenever you you, you last trained or when you got released when you were younger what's what's been the best piece of advice you've been given just to finish on that one just like from anyone there's one one from Jack. Um, was good, good things happen to good people. It's um, pretty self-explanatory. If you put yourself, if you know you're doing the right thing and doing all the right things and pushing this in the right direction to achieve that one goal that you've got or a goal that you've got, then most of the time it's it's you have to be a pretty unlucky person for it not to, yeah. for it not to come off. But even, and even if it doesn't work how you want it to, you still know that you've done everything you possibly could have done to get there. Perfect, mate. And team, 
I think it's a fantastic point to end on, obviously. Make sure you enjoy it. Take your time. Be patient. And good things happen to those who wait, or as Jack said, a little bit differently. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for watching um, the seventh episode. Thanks very much to H for coming on. It's it's a difficult man to get old of this, lads. Obviously, I was a bit a bit nervous when I messaged him. I was just expecting a flat. No, mate, I'm busy. So, Jeez. mate, I really, really appreciate your time. Obviously, a huge, huge respect for that. I really, really appreciate it. And obviously, everyone, get in the comment section and let him know. Um, you know, give him the best of luck for for the future. And fingers crossed, the end of this this is not going to be his last year. We'll see him in the in the professional scene, mate. Thanks very much, H. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Cheers, bud. No worries at all, mate. Soon, later on, once you once you once you get your proper senior England cap, then we'll we'll have you on again. Caps. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Catch you in a bit, team. <laughs> in a bit. Don't make-